All right, welcome back boys. This is phase three, episode three. We're gonna show you guys how to long track a phaser for cheap. So stock, a phaser has a 121 inch track. This thing has been extended to a 136. So it should have a lot more flotation and ride a little better hopefully. And also it looks way cooler. <laughs> I use starting line products, uh, rail extensions. You can also use phaser ST extensions as well. For the tunnel itself, I wound up using an Arctic Cat tunnel from a Procross chassis. You're gonna see why that was a little interesting in a little bit. Let's dive into it. First up, I think we need to get this thing face down, ass up, because that's the way that I like to take skids out. You've probably seen me do this before in a previous video. If you want more detailed information, um, click right up here. There's gonna be a how-to video. Other than that, I'm just gonna do this as a time lapse because I've already gone way more into depth than doing all this stuff, so let's do it. suspension. See if you notice anything. Oh, it's cracked. What? What's up with that? It's literally about to snap. <laughs> good. Good then. Yep. Okay, so now that we got the back of the tunnel undressed, it's time to lengthen it and make it longer. I'm gonna be using a starting line 3235 tunnel extension. You can use a lot of different things. Some people use street signs, some people use the back half of an old wrecked sled. Really doesn't matter a whole lot as long as it's strong enough for a rear bumper. I just grabbed this one because it was a hundred bucks and it seemed like it was ready to go. It said it was for Yamaha products. So it's for a 133 to 136 inch track, which is good because I'm putting in a 136. Width is perfect, but yeah, that... it's really not a whole lot right here. I mean, that's like a barely an extension there, boys. All right, boys, I lucked out. Found a guy pretty local to me that had these two Arctic Cat tunnels for sale, super cheap, and I was really excited about them. First, because they're way too long, so I can cut them to any size I want. But secondly, just because they have a little bit more of a modern rake to them than some of the chopped off older things. So I thought these would be a pretty good solution. The problem was I didn't know that they were different tunnel widths. Now, both the Phaser and newer cats run 15 inch wide tracks. So I figured the tunnel width would be the same, but no, it's not happening. So I think to start, what I want to do is roll the skid back under here and add the extensions and figure out where the track is gonna end. So I have the skid roughly in line with the front bolt hole here. And then I took the ST extensions and a rear wheel. So this is telling me where the rear of the track is gonna be. From there, I'm just gonna put something straight up here and then kind of figure out how long I need to chop these tunnel extensions. So because the tunnels are different widths, I'm gonna slit them and then scissor them. And then we're just gonna rivet them and should be good. This tunnel actually already has some tunnel protection in place. So this is gonna have to be on the bottom and then this is gonna have to go over the top. So what I think I wanna do is basically slit this corner and see if I can get this whole thing to taper inward. We're also gonna pop off these reinforcement plates that might help as well. I don't think we're gonna need those plates anymore once the aluminum is literally doubled up in this area. Let's long track a phaser, boys. We got this cutting tip when we were cutting the roof off the van to put the high top on and it was really cool. So we're hoping it'll work here too. Okay, 
so this is such a nicer edge. It's really not as sharp at all as when you grind it, but we don't have a big enough compressor and it was gonna take a day and a half. So we're switching between, whatever. But this really is a great tool. It just, not with that little guy, apparently. So now that the extension's done, it's time to move on to the skid itself. Now I've got two options here. These are the factory ST rail extensions and these are the SLP extensions. They're pretty similar in terms of the fact that they're both aluminum. The SLPs are thicker and they also have this pill shape machined into them that fits really nicely in here. So I think these are gonna be a little stronger if you're concerned about that. But honestly, this is probably strong enough considering this is what Yamaha did from the factory. However, I am going to be using these ones on this build. Either way, you have to remove the track adjusters, but you see this extra axle here. Installing the OEM rails on a non-ST skid means you have to drill some new holes and you need to drill a big hole for this axle. And I don't wanna do that because I don't have a drill bit that big. So we're gonna be using these guys. So one thing you have to do with these SLP extensions is they do make things a little bit thicker. So you have to shorten the outer wheel spacers by a quarter inch on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark them up and nip the tip. All right, so here are the wheel spacers. I actually shortened one of them. The other one I just used from the ST axle. Um, what's funny is I didn't realize this, but the ST extensions mount outward so these spacers are just different lengths than a normal phaser axle. The original one was fused to the bolt and they had to cut the bolt in half to get it out. So yeah, we're just gonna trim that one down so it's the same height as the original one. Should be good enough. All right, we actually just got it in. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know why there was no room to get this in here, but what she did was she pulled up on this part of the track, and then I'm inside the track here, and I tried just shoving this thing this way and then use my elbow to push up on this part of the track. So, yeah, it fit. I, I think we're good now. Um, just need to keep her moving. We're gonna put that in there. You don't wanna like spray paint it to make it look not so rusty or anything? I think it matches the rest of the sled. That's true, that's fair. All right, so I put some pads down there for you. You should be good at this because it mainly involves laying on your back. Oh my God. Why do I help you? Why, why? <laughs> All right, long track phaser complete. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that thing. It's, well, the seat's not folded on yet. But... Yeah, so we have the seat base over there that's tapered because the whole tunnel 
is narrower here than it is there because cat tunnels are a little narrower for some stupid reason. <laughs> All right, Sarah hasn't seen it yet. Here we go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Looks awesome, babe. You like the way the seat turned out? Yeah. Sly Dog Powder Hound Skis. I was say, big boys. New carbides. I'm clicking back off. Now get it. It goes though. It does. It sure does. All right. What do you think we go rip around on phasers? Uh, We're gonna get stuck for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about this. Might place. need to bring the ATV later and tow one home. Great. She drives. <laughs> what was the hardest part of the project? Not having any snow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Was not like, really conducive to the Yeah, life. lack of snow meant lack of uh, ability to tune this thing very well. Yeah. All right, cheers boys. If you learn anything, like, subscribe, or don't. We're just gonna keep building crappy old sleds. Stay tuned for upcoming adventures in crazy van trailers and death boats. Springtime. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, boys.